Welcome to OVA Isis. First of all, I'd like to apologise. I haven't uploaded any videos recently, and that is purely down to the fact that when I started the channel a couple of months ago, I was between jobs, and now I have a new job. So I've had to reprioritise a few things, and I haven't been able to put, put up any uh, videos. But I've had lots to talk about, so I'm looking forward to um, getting back into it. I don't know if I'll be able to actually upload a video every week. I'll be looking at probably two weeks, uh, but... Nevertheless, I'm going to carry on with the channel, and if you have just subscribed, thank you very much for the support. I will be putting out some more videos, as I say. Um, I'd also like to address uh, one of my previous videos, the Suicide Bunny Exposed video, has received a bit of criticism for being sensationalist, and while I completely agree with that and hold my hands up, yes, it is a bit sensationalist, in my defence, I was um, providing a summary of points that had been provided by Clickbang, a podcast, uh, and they provided all the evidence, so... Uh, I just pre presented it in a much shorter fashion and put loads of links to it, so go and watch that video if you like, but um, on with the video today, I'm going to be talking about London, because specifically I've got myself a new job which requires that I move around central London quite a lot, um, and I've been spending a lot of time above ground these days instead of in the tube, and I'm still noticing a lot more smokers than e-cigarette users. The question is, is the rise in popularity of e-cigarettes not as widespread as the media would suggest? Or am I not seeing the e-cigarette users because they're uh, enjoying their privilege to use them indoors? Or is it that vapists are intrinsically less noticeable than vapors because of the less offensive nature of vapor as opposed to smoke? Whichever of the aforementioned is correct, it's still clear to me that the majority of nicotine users are still smokers and not vapors. So when I vape in public, I hardly expect to be noticed. But it keeps happening with increasing regularity, and it's actually very encouraging. I've got all types of folks approaching me asking about my mod, which is unusual because people usually avoid the beardy skinhead with bad teeth. I'm not gonna fucking punch you, mate! One colleague even thanked me personally for helping him to make the switch from cigarettes to vaping. Which brings me to my first point. Smokers need vapors. And as such, vapors shouldn't be offended when they are confined to smoking areas. It's the best place for them. The very act of vaping is the best way to uh, support it, and the more interest you generate, the more people will question their own tobacco habit. And where better to do that than around smokers? Recently, TfL, Transport for London, announced that e-cigarettes are now banned on all of their services. TfL covers most public transport in and around London, including the Tube. Their conditions of carriage, updated on September the 16th, 2014, Article 4.5 states that, for safety reasons, on our buses and underground trains, and in our bus and underground stations, you must not smoke or use an electronic cigarette, and vape in brackets. It's a simple statement, it comes as no surprise. It's in the same category as skateboarding and flash photography, which is a behavioural risk to passengers and staff. So I support the statement, and will follow the rules. But what I like most about this statement is its specificity. specificity. It relates directly to all underground services and stations and bus services and stations. It does not cover overground rail services or street level bus stops. It does, however, link to other documents that do govern overground services. So I went down the rabbit hole for a little while and came out clean. There is no mention of e-cigarettes or vaping on any of the associated documentation. So it would seem that it's not a blanket ban after all. Overground stations without underground links and street level bus stops are seemingly exempt from Article 4.5 but common courtesy still applies, see my video about that. Granted, I may have overlooked something, but if it's in there, it's not very clear. Now, I use Greater Anglia rail services quite regularly in and out of London, and with a different service, different rules apply. And while I'm not going to vape on a train, the majority of stations along the route do not have an underground link, and are therefore potentially exempt from Article 4.5. But again, this is not clear, so I looked it up on Greater Anglia's website. And the website states, Please note that smoking is not permitted on any of our trains or at stations, including the open platforms. The use of e-cigarettes is also not permitted. There's no ambiguity about that statement at all. But it's important to understand at this point that these statements come from official code of conduct and conditions of carriage documentation, and not bylaws. The railway bylaws themselves refer to smoking and lit substances. Check out my previous video on that, Vapor Science. So while TFA and Greater Anglia have every right to refuse service to an electronic cigarette user, the British Transport Authority shouldn't get involved. 
And that doesn't mean they won't. So if you're traveling on public transport in London, be aware, be careful, and make sure you've read and understood where the loopholes might be. If you're outside of London, the same advice applies. Read all of the documentation that applies to your locality. There may be some exemptions. If you've ever received a fine for vaping or been ejected from a service, let us know in the comments. As always, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Vape Crisis.